Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us Need Software to 213-640-9738. That's 213-640-9738. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Baiter now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. Hey, what's going on? This is Tariq Nasheed, and I am in Washington, D.C. right now at Freedom Plaza. This is the location where we're going to have the FBA Rally for Reparations on Saturday, November 5th, 2022. We got Dr. Boyce Watkins, Teslin Figaro, Riza Islam, Professor James Small, Dr. Kaba, so many phenomenal people and many, many more. This is the most important rally that we've had in modern American history because this is the first time that we've gotten together as a group collectively to come to the powers that be and demand specific tangibles for foundational black Americans. You don't want to miss this, ladies and gentlemen. So be here, Freedom Plaza, Washington, D.C., November 5th, 2022. For more information, go to rallyforreparations.com. That's rallyforreparations.com. Who knew I would make it this far? They hated, they never believed me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball. I know I make it look easy. Yeah, Mayweather with the defense. I don't care what a critic got to say. I got him picking up the pieces. All right. What's going on, man? I'm here. I'm here. Hold on. Hold on. All right, what's going on, man? I'm here. What's going on, man? How's the family doing? All right. Let's get it together. Pulling it together. Just very busy day today for me. Very busy day for me today. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, I got on my rally for reparations shirt. A um, few days left for the, the major rally in Washington, D.C., the historic rally going down in Washington, D.C., in a few days, next Saturday, ladies and gentlemen. Next Saturday, hold on. Rally for reparations happening in Washington, D.C., ladies and gentlemen. Go to rallyforreparations.com for more information. I want to see all of my Eastern Seaboard people, everybody in Philly, Baltimore, up in Jersey, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. Y'all need to come on through. How far, where are my North Carolina people? Where are my North Carolina people in the chat room? I'm waiting on everybody to come on in here. Waiting on everybody to come on through. Where are my North Carolina people? Hmm. My North Carolina people. Yo, y'all like the picture of the baby girl? Yeah, I had my, my beautiful baby girl. Um, we took some pictures last night. Me and little baby Amira, beautiful baby girl, and my boys, the lovely, lovely boys. They're at a birthday party right now. Yeah, if you want to get one of these shirts, hit the link below, rallyforreparations.com. I want to see y'all rocking your shirts out there in D.C., ladies and gentlemen. Get your shirts right now on um, rallyforreparations.com. Raleigh, North Carolina, guys, how far is the drive from Raleigh to D.C.? Uh, well, how far is the drive from Charlotte, North Carolina to D.C.? It's five hours. That's it's five hours that far? It's about six hours away? Okay. 
That's still it's a, it's a decent drive. Y'all can still hit that drive. So Charlotte, North Carolina is about six hours from um, D.C. About four, somebody said four hours. I'm getting different, about four and a half, four hours. Four or five hour drive, okay. Man, y'all need to come on through. Y'all get a carpool going. Y'all get a carpool going and come on out there to D.C. We need to see everybody. If you're in Atlanta, drive through from Atlanta. Or just hop on a plane. The flight is an hour. Like, what, 45 minutes? It's a very, real short flight. You're in Charlotte, too. Okay. Three hours from Durham. Okay. All right. I want to see everybody in the place. Freedom Plaza next Saturday. All right, we're not going to be on here too too long tonight because I'm I'm getting a lot of stuff ready because I'm going to D.C. early this week. I'm going to D.C. early. I'm just wrapping up some stuff here at home before I roll out because we, we got everything popping. It's going to be a phenomenal event, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a phenomenal event out there in uh, Washington, D.C. It's a 50-minute flight. So a few things we got to talk on. Now, listen, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to show the trailer for the new film, American Maroon. Um, highly anticipated film. You guys are going to be the first to see the trailer for the new film, American Maroon. So, uh, will the rally be streamed live? Well, the thing is, we're going to have a DJ out there. and um, I don't know if we can... I don't know if we're going to stream it live because I know if you start playing copyrighted music, they'll start striking your page. So I'm trying to figure out how we're going to do that. We'll see. It's going to be filmed. And we got some press people and some media people coming out. So, you know, you're going to see what's popping. You're going to see what's popping. All right. Oh, man. So what's, uh, what is going on? I know, you know, shout out to Layla and Bree. They, they do a radio show out there. They do it remotely from here. But there's a radio station in D.C., that they're clicked in with. They do, a, I think, a Saturday show. I can't think of the name of the station. But they're hooking us up with um, some promotional stuff with the radio station out there. So, yeah, the, the Ism Girls are still doing their thing. The lovely Bree and Layla, they're still doing their thing. Um, you going to drive from D.C. to Atlanta? That's what's up. You know what? There is an after party. Um you know, I'm going to have to put that on the website. We, we do have an after party, too. We got an after party popping. I'm going to put that information. I forgot the name of the place, but, yeah, there's going to be after party. We've just been so focused on making the main event pop off, you, you see. Um, you said, uh, you're talking about Kyrie Irving. You say Kyrie wants to be considered a deep thinker. Okay, we're going to get into Kyrie right now. All right, let's get into the topic here. And remember, in... Um, Shortly, when we get around, what, 5,000 people in here, then we're going to play the trailer for the film. So if y'all want me to play the trailer, once we hit 5,000 people, then I'm going to play the trailer for the new film, American Maroon. Once we get 5,000 people in here, I'm going to play the trailer for the new movie, American Maroon. All right? Now look. Right now... A lot of people in the dominant society, they're dogpiling on Kanye right now. Kanye is getting dogpiled on. They're really dogpiling on him heavy. Because Kanye jumped out the window, talking real reckless. And, you know, what Kanye was saying, can't nobody co-sign it, really. And can't nobody really defend it. So they know they got Kanye. And Kanye... Um, he's a man without a country, so to speak. He really doesn't have a base. So what Kanye's been doing, he kind of, I know he apologized to the Jewish community, which I knew he was going to do, which is what he had to do. Um, he kind of lightweight apologized to black society about the George Floyd comments. Because again, I, like I said, man, Kanye is a man without a country. He alleviated his base. He don't have a base. So he just thought he was going to be out here saying reckless stuff. And he thought that the white supremacists um, we're going to have his back, and he learned the hard way that they do not have his back. He learned the hard way that the white supremacists are not rocking with him. The Candace Owens crowd, that alt-right crowd, they ain't got you, bruh. 
You don't see none of those people stepping up to the plate to defend Kanye. All of these people who he thought he was going to be clicked in with the the alt-right and making these comments about Jewish people. No, they say all that stuff on 4chan and they say it on um, Stormfront websites like that, but they don't say that stuff openly. And they let Kanye be a billion-dollar crash dummy, which was dumb. All of the chess move Negroes, they're quiet now because they're seeing how all of them endorsements are drying up. Kanye is out here. He went up to the Skechers office. They kicked him out. I told people last week, I said, hey, man, the lawsuits are going to start coming. Sure enough, the lawsuits started coming from people who he worked with. The people he was working with are throwing lawsuits at him. So we knew that was coming. It's down bad. He ain't got no friends. He's down bad. He's down bad right now. So he's trying to find his way. I hope the brother's going to be all right. So, But this is the thing. Now, what the dominant society is doing, they're using this Kanye thing to justify their own anti-black racism and use Kanye as a whipping boy, as a proxy for all of us, all right? So now when they can get a good Negro that they can whip on real good and can't nobody defend them, boy, they, they're doing the Birdman hand rub. Boy, they're doing the Birdman hand rub. I see you, TB. I'm not going to buy no peanut brittle, my G. But yeah, he's doing the Birdman hand rub. Let me see some of the people. Um, what's up, Boss Grilla? I see you. Let me shout out some people who's hitting the super chat. What's up, Anthony G? Is that my keyboard player, Anthony G? Is that the Mink Slide keyboard player? What's up, Carlo? Carlo said, keep up the good work. Shout out to the super chat family. Much respect to you. Much respect to you. I greatly appreciate that. And also, guys, you can hit up the Cash App or you can go to Rally for Reparations. Hit that link below and you can donate. That would be great. We still need, because this is all grassroots, so we do need people to donate to the Rally for Reparations site to, to pull this e monumental event off, ladies and gentlemen. But back to what I'm saying. So the white supremacists are doing the Birdman hand rub. They, they're like, we got us a Negro. He can't be defended. Nobody can defend what he said, so we got him. Nobody black better really step up. Nobody prominent, nobody who's prominent in black better not stand up and defend him because we're going to spank them too. So they're having a field day on Kanye. They're doing stuff to Kanye that they ain't done to nobody else. Mel Gibson said some real reckless stuff. They let him back in Hollywood eventually. They didn't start closing bank accounts and start stripping money away from Mel Gibson like that. Yeah. So now what they're doing, family, they're like, since we didn't drew blood from these Negroes, let's, um, let's find a couple of other high profile Negroes we can spank up a little bit, who we can just claim that they're anti-Semitic so that we can justify spanking them. So what they did was circle back around to Kyrie Irving. They circled back around because remember, they were already, the white media um, and the dominant society, many of them were already mad at Kyrie Irving because Kyrie did not want to take the jizzab. All right? Kyrie stood on his square. He was like, I ain't taking nothing. So they don't like a black man standing up for himself especially a black man who's prominent, a black man who works for a major corporation and makes a lot of money, which is the NBA. They don't like black men telling white people no. Shout out to Child of Ogun uh, for the super chat. Thank you. Shout out to Mark X for the super chat. They don't like a black man telling any white people no. Whatever you're bringing me, I don't want it. Kyrie stood up like a man. Oh, yeah, they circle back around to Kyrie. This is all this is about. They, they had to circle back around him to kind of make him get some act right. Still never took it. He stood on his square like a man. Nothing but respect for that brother. Now, listen. So now he stood on his square. He, Kyrie, had the grassroots backing him because he's a rider. He never talked about All Lives Matter and George Floyd had fentanyl. He, no, Kyle, Kyrie never talked greasy about the black community. He's always pretty much spoken up for the black community and spoke up for black issues. So we, we had him. We, were, we had that brother. 
We're rocking with them, and we're still rocking with them now. So now they're going to double back around. So let's go. We got to go get him. We got to put him in his place. So what they did, Kyrie posted a link to an Amazon movie. He posted a link to a movie called From Hebrews to Negroes. All he did was post a link to it. That's all he did. So now the, the, the suspected white supremacists are like, well, that movie is anti-Semitic and Kyrie is promoting anti-Semitism. So he needs to apologize. So now they're trying to falsely accuse this brother of being anti-Semitic because he posted a link to a movie on Amazon. And they're trying to browbeat him and, and spank him up. Let me see if I could um, show the press conference with that um, white journalist trying to punk Kyrie. And Kyrie stood on his square. He wasn't going for that right here. Let me play this. All right. Let me play some of this right here, ladies and gentlemen. I think this is it right here. So this is him giving a press conference, and one of the reporters tried to um, browbeat him. Hold on. Philippians 2.11, and my name translates in the Hebrew language as Yahweh. So I went on the Amazon Prime. I was like, you know what? Let me see if there are any documentaries on Yahweh. So went in the search bar, typed in Yahweh. That came up. Went out and shared it on my platform. That was my night. In terms of the backlash or what people call it, uh, we're in 2022. History is not supposed to be hidden from anybody. And I'm not a divisive person when it comes to religion. I, I embrace all walks of life. You see it on all my platforms. I talk to all races, all cultures, all religions. And my response would be, um, it's not about educating yourself on what Semitism is, what anti-Semitism is. It's really about learning the root words of where these come from and understanding that this is an African heritage that is also belonging to the people africa is in it now where's the lie okay let me stop it right there where where's the lie where did he lie where did Kyrie lie are there any people in the dominant society in the chat room if you can point out a lie we'll stop there because see we're going to bring truth to power what's up siri what's up boy y'all good got candy yeah Where's the lie? You understand? Just, I'm just saying, this, if, if there's any lies or any anti-anything, let's just stop it there and let's clear anything up. Okay, I'm going to play some more. What he said was factual, what he said. All right? Hebrew, African language. That's African heritage. There were Hebrews in Africa. Uh, either that is true or it's not true. All right? I'm asking anybody who has any opposition, were there Hebrews in Africa? Okay? See, we got to have a real conversation about this stuff. Because what happens is when black folks say certain things and then the, the anti-black sector of the white Jewish community will come along and start trying to smack black people in place and saying that you need to sit down and we need to have a conversation on the, about black and Jewish relationships. But it's never a two-sided conversation. It's always a one-sided conversation where the um, anti-black white people within Jewish society wants to sit down and reprimand black people. It's never a real conversation. Conversations go two ways. Not just you sitting down browbeating a black person who's on the hot seat, who's being threatened by some type of deprivation of his resources. You see, if you have to sit a black person down and then start threatening to take stuff away from them, that's not a conversation. That's anti-black racism. Okay? Let's have a real conversation here tonight. You understand what I'm saying? I feel like you're saying that's the same thing Kanye was saying, but Kanye went somewhere else with it. 
when Kanye start talking about I'm gonna go Defcon three on Jews, nobody can co-sign that. You don't say no stuff like that. That's not cool. All right. You know, you can mix stuff in, but when you say I'm gonna go Defcon three on Jews, you done messed up, dude. Nobody's co-signing that. Let me play some more of our brother Kyrie. Let me play some more of Kyrie. I just he's not telling any lies. If he's lying, I would be the first to call him out. Like I said, Kanye, I called that stuff out that he was saying. You don't see him talking about you're going to go DEFCON 3 on a on a, on an ethnic group. and No, that's not cool. But what our brother Kyrie is saying, it's not telling a lie. Hold on. Whether we want to dismiss it or not. So the claims of anti-Semitism and who are the original chosen people of God, and we go into these religious conversations, and it's a big no-no. I don't live my way like that. I don't live my life that way. Excuse me, I grew up in a melting pot. And I say a melting pot of all races, white, black, red, yellow, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, and you can see the way I live my life now. I'm not here to be divisive, so they could push their agenda. I don't want to say they, because I'm not identifying any one group or race of people, but I'm in a unique position to have a level of influence on my community. And what I post does not mean that I support everything that's being said or everything that's being done or I'm campaigning for anything. All I do is post things for my people in my community and those that it's actually going to impact. Anybody else that has criticism and obviously wasn't meant for them. Hopefully I'm understanding what you said and I, I want to make sure I get it right because I don't want to miss I don't expect. I don't expect understanding from a media conglomerate group that sincerely talks about the game of basketball and then we bring up religion as if it's correlative at times when it's convenient for people to bring it up. So please just be direct with your question so we can move on from this up. There you, I like that. I like that. I like that. That's how you do. Shout out to Kyrie. Like, look, don't start with the bad faith bullshit. That's, I, I was, I, I had a debate with a, a white supremacist the other day, if, if you guys follow me on Twitter space, and he started trying to, we, we had a cool conversation, it, were, it was respectful, and then he tried to get into some stuff some bad faith stuff. We start talking about Kyle Rittenhouse. He was like, well, Kyle Rittenhouse, he's the most anti-racist person you would ever. Stop, dude. Don't waste my time because now you, 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 you're you about to start trolling. Don't do that. And I res that's what Kyrie did. Don't, don't start the bad faith arguments. Just be direct. Just be direct so that we can just get to the point and keep it pushing. Don't start bullshitting. All right? All right. All right. Hold on. I could talk about the game and go home to my son, Elohim, and my wife, Marlene, okay? I might take it that this was, the, what you shared, was not something that you've even watched. This was, you did, okay, you did watch it, or either watch it or read it. I had a lot of time last year to read a lot. Read a whole bunch. Good and bad about the truth of our world. So then do you, I guess, understand or not understand those that might imply that that work had anti-Semitic leanings in it. Right. I only ask this because the tweet is still up there, so I We're in 2022. It's on Amazon, a public platform. Whether you want to go watch it or not is up to you. There's things being posted every day. I'm no different than the next human being, so don't treat me any different. You guys come in here and make up this powerful influence I have over top of the adultery of oh, you. You cannot post that. Why not? Why not? Real talk. Stand on your square, player. I love it. He didn't do anything wrong. He just posted a link that's on Amazon. The movie is on Amazon. If y'all had a problem with that movie, why are you not hollering at Jeff Bezos and the Amazon people for even having the movie? If, if the movie was so bad, it's on Amazon. There's a lot of movies that some people might like, some people might find disturbing. The Jeffrey Dahmer story is on Amazon, different documentaries about Jeffrey Dahmer. When you watch it or you post the link to it, you're not co-signing cannibalism. You're just trying to see what, what's going on. You're trying to learn a part of history. You're just trying to learn a part of history. You dig? So yeah, you know, they don't have a problem with that damn movie, it's on Amazon. If it was that bad, you would've went to Jeff Bezos or whoever and said, hey man, you need to take this movie down. You don't get mad at the person who shared the link to it. What kind of nonsense is that? That's anti-Semitic. He shared a link to a movie. He didn't promote it. He just say, hey, here's a link to this movie I just watched. You see? You're going to skip over the white people and then find a black person who shared the link to the Amazon page, but you ain't mad at Amazon. 
This is a bunch of I'm white and I say so nonsense. You think? Shout out to Kyrie standing on his square. This is how you do it. You stand on your damn square. He didn't do a damn thing wrong. Hold on. Oh, they bleeped him. What were they doing? What? I don't hear an uproar of that. I'm not here to be divisive on what's going on on this or that. I'm not comparing Jews to blacks. I'm not comparing white to black. I'm not doing that. That conversation is dismissive and it constantly revolves around the rhetoric of who are the chosen people of God. And I'm not here to argue over a person or a culture or religion on what they believe. No, this is what is here. It's on a public platform. Did I do anything illegal? Okay. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Did I do anything illegal? Did I hurt anybody? Did I harm anybody? Am I going out and saying that I hate one specific group of people? So out of all the judgment that people got from me posting, I, I just, without talking to me, and then I respect what Joe said, but there has a lot to do with the not ego or pride of how proud I am to be an African heritage, but also to be living as a free black man here in America, knowing the historical complexities for me to get here. Boom. Let me, let me stop it right there. He's, he's hitting them. He's hitting them heavy. He keeps reiterating that's an African heritage. Let's be clear. That's Hebrew is an African heritage. It's an African heritage. There were Hebrews in Africa, family, in ancient Africa. There were Hebrews in Africa. You know? When you talk about ancient, in Kemet and Egypt and all, there were Hebrews. All right? These are historic facts. This is just straight history. This is not opinion. This is straight history. Are we mad at him for acknowledging history? And he's hitting on all cylinders. See, the thing is, hold on. The thing is, the fact that he keeps reiterating that this is an African heritage as well. They really don't like that. A lot of folks don't like that. There's this whole thing where if a black person acknowledges their African or their, their Hebrew heritage or lineage, they're saying just that alone is anti-Semitic, which is not. That's just some white nice say so. That's some white nice say so. Gig. Hold on, let me show y'all something. Because they want to sit up and talk about Kyrie promoting that movie. Let me tell you something. Going, let's go back to the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. Let's go back to the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. Because family, a lot of people were disturbed by that Jeffrey Dahmer film on Netflix. A lot of people complained, even some of the family members. They were like, hey, this is bringing up some memories. And the media was like, hey, well, you Negroes calm down. It's, it's history. It happened. You can't change the past. They were telling black folks to shut the hell up. Hey, history is history, black folks. And people were like, I don't, I don't know, man. This Jeffrey Dahmer stuff is real disturbing. It's making me, you know, I'm reliving horror. Oh, you're going to be all right. You know, you First Amendment, we got a right to tell the truth about what happened. Yada, 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 yada. And that Jeffrey Dahmer movie, again, that has inspired a lot of people to go around, it's Halloween now, to dress up in trick-or-treat costumes like Jeffrey Dahmer. Because see, the thing is, Jeffrey was primarily eating, killing, and eating black people. So a lot of people in the dominant society, they like to trivialize that. Now, the series was good. It was a good series. It was good. It was deep. It was good. I give it. It was good. But the thing is, because Jeffrey Dahmer was eating black people primarily and most of his victims were black, a lot of the dominant society, they like to trivialize it. They do little stuff like this. Let me show you some of the little sick stuff that they do. At certain restaurants, they have like a Jeffrey Dahmer special pizza, right? Like this. You can order the Jeffrey Dahmer special at this pizza place in Texas. So they got eyeballs, fingers, and guts. So they, they think stuff when, when black folks... This goes back to the delectable Negro narrative. There's a book talking about how white supremacist society, they've always gotten off on eating and consuming black people. That's been, that's a thing with them, man. Even since slavery, they would ingest black people. When they would lynch black people, they would cut off the body parts and they would eat our body parts, family. Um, when they killed Nat Turner, 
they made an oil out of his body. I mean, they they just sauteed his body up and did all types of stuff with it. Um, Parsoned out the body parts, made an oil out of the body, drunk the oil. They they did all types of ritualistic stuff with Nat Turner's body, man. You dig? But listen, let me play some more of Kyrie. This is truth to power. We're gonna bring, we're gonna play truth to power. And then hold on, guys, hold on. And guys, retweet this. Retweet this broadcast right now. Everybody retweet this broadcast because we're going to show the trailer for the new movie, American Maroon, in a few minutes. Uh, you guys are going to be the first to see this. Hold on. So I'm not going to stand down on anything that I believe in. I'm only going to get stronger because I'm not alone. I have a whole army around me. Yes, you do. Kerry, while we're on the topic of promotion, why did you decide to promote so Look how he's using the word promote. Look how these slick ass suspected white supremacists try to word things. He keeps using the word promote. He just posted the link. Then Alex Jones said, that was a few weeks ago. I do not stand with Alex Jones position, narrative, court case that he had with Sandy Hook or any of the kids that felt like they had to relive trauma or parents that had to relive trauma or to be dismissive to all the lives that were lost during that uh, tragic event. My, my post was a post from Alex Jones that he did in the early 90s or late 90s about secret societies in America of occults. And it's true. So I wasn't identifying with anything of being a campaign, a campaignist for Alex Jones or anything. Right. And that's another thing, too. See, they try to do this thing where they'll um, let me look. There's some people from the right and there's even Alex Jones and Alex Jones is an idiot. But Alex Jones, he's one of these people who will mix in complete idiocy with a few true things. He'll throw some truth out there and then mix it in with a whole bunch of BS. So that's why I don't really rock with Alex Jones. Alex Jones don't even like me because they've done, he's done negative stories about me on his website because I called out white supremacy and I called out his racist ass too. I've called out him and they used to write negative articles on me on his website all the time. I, I went after him his racist ass staff all the time. All right. So now they're trying to insinuate that he's co-signing Alex Jones. All that. So, you know, this is, they're doing the I'm white and I say so shuffle. Hold on. Hold on. I'm just there to post. And it's funny. And it's actually hilarious because out of all the things I posted that day, that was the one post that everyone chose to, chose to see. It just goes back to the way our world is and works. I'm not here to complain about it. I just exist. And to follow up on the promotion of the movie and the book. Can you please stop calling it a promotion? What am I promoting? Put it out on your platform. But I'm promoting it? Do you see me doing, do you see By me in front of the, it out there, the people title? People are going to say that you are yeah, promoting. Yeah, put it out there just like you put things out there, right? Yeah, but I. Okay. I, it's not you put stuff. things out there for a living, right? Right, but my great, stuff is great, not so let's move on. filled let's with anti-Semitic Let's stuff. move on. Don't dehumanize me up here. I, I'm not I'm not doing I'm that. You're free to post I can what, post whatever I want, so say what, that and shut it down and move on to the next question. But Kyrie, you have to understand that by I don't have post, to understand anything from you. But, but, nothing, stop me. Nothing. By no people that you're making up, bro. Move on. But by posting what you Move on, next question. Anybody Do you guys have any more questions? And from they're going to say, you guys have any more questions? This is, gonna be a clip. this is going to be a clip that he's going to marvel at. Is this any more questions? But you're not answering the question. Oh, this, this is another answering your question. Oh my God, let's make another Instagram clip so we can be famous again. Next question. Kyrie, basketball related. All right, so Kyrie's like, look, there you go. Shout out to Kyrie for shutting that nonsense down. Yeah, they're trying to pull the old I'm white and I say so jazz on Kyrie, and he ain't going for it. And shout out to that brother. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. He ain't going for it. So now let's look at some of the headlines as it relates to this story. Now look at look at some of the headlines here. Look at some of the headlines. Um, look at this. Let's go to Google. Um, Kyrie Irving boost anti-Semitic movie peddling Jewish slave ships. Okay. And then there was some stuff about where the movie got conspiracy theories and hold on, let, let, let's, let's, let's stop there for one. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there for a second. Let's just talk history for a second. 
Because this whole narrative, if if black people point out that there were Jewish people involved in the slave trade, they say that's anti-Semitic. And then they, uh, I see a lot of people will push the goalpost away. Because I heard, um, the, what's the, Joy Behar, she was on um, the, the View, and she said something like, yeah, Jewish people weren't involved in the slave trade. I'm like, what? That's not true. She straight up said that. That's not true. Let me see if I can find a clip on that. I'm like, the hell is she talking about? That's not true. And when you point out that, yeah, there were Jewish slave owners. There were, I don't know what their Jewishness had to do with anything, but there were white people who were Christian, Jew, whatever. But Because me, I don't break white people up in all of these groups. I don't because they all work, the white supremacists, the one who believe in anti-black racism, they all work in conjunction with each other against us. So I don't break them up in different groups. You dig? But there were white people who practiced anti-black racism, who came from multiple ethnic, multiple white religious, and other subgroups within white society. Okay? So that's not singling out anybody, but nobody is going to get a pass for practicing anti-black racism. And you enslave people and you say, well, I got a pass because um, our group was oppressed at one point as well. No, because if you were oppressed and you're oppressing me, I'm double oppressed. You see? Let's be very clear with this history here. I'm looking at this from a historic standpoint. Hold on, let me see. Um, Joy Behar, let me let me see if I can find that clip of her saying something. Let's see if I can find that clip real quick. Uh, where's that clip? I probably can't find it now. Um, but yeah, I remember her distinctively saying that yeah, Jews didn't. Um, have nothing to do with slavery like yeah yeah now some people say well y'all well some of these Hebrew Israelite people say that well Jewish people control the slave trade I don't I won't get into who controlled what because there were different white people controlling it so I don't get into who controlled it but were there white Jewish people involved in the slave trade yes that's the truth that's not anti-Semitic. The first synagogue built here in America, one of the first ones was built by Aaron Lopez, who was a major slave owner. All right? We're just talking history. This is history. There's an, there were anti-black racists within white Jewish society who did horrible things to black people. Not all of the Jewish white people. Even now, over there in Israel, some of the white people who are part of the anti-black sector of Jewish society. They practice anti-black racism against the um, Ethiopian Jews over there now. Okay? They practice racism against the Ethiopian Jews right now. These are facts. This is not anti-Semitic. You see? I'm, I'm being very clear. I'm talking history right now. I'm talking all history. This is none of, none, nothing I'm saying is my opinion on anything. Let's be clear, because I don't say the Jews did this. No, because I'm not going to paint all Jewish people with one brush. I never say the Jews did this. No, there are anti-black racists within Jewish society who are white. Yes, I'm not going to deny that because that would be dangerous for me to sit here. And because that white person happens to be Jewish, I'm supposed to alleviate him from any potential racism. No, no. If anybody's practicing anti-black racism, no matter what denomination they are or what ethnic group they identify with, I need to know who they are and I need to be careful and I need to be able to identify them. You see? But to sit up here and say it's a conspiracy theory or it's anti-Semitic to point out that there were people who happened to be Jewish who were involved with the slave trade, that's anti-black racism to try to browbeat us into denying historic reality, okay? In fact, people like Judah P. Benjamin, who was 
what many people call, historians, white historians, call him the brains of the Confederacy. This was one of the second in command in the Confederacy. He was a Jewish man. Judah P. Benjamin from down there in Louisiana had several slaves, enslaved black people, and enslaved my people. Now, me saying that and acknowledging history, how's that anti-Semitic? That's the truth. He was practicing anti-black racism. What he did was horrible. That's the truth. You had some of those other white supremacist confederates. I think over there on the East Coast, there's a, um, a Hebrew confederate cemetery over there. They have a cemetery for the Jewish confederates. That's a reality. You can go over there and see it now. Okay? So the, if we're going to have a conversation, the conversation has to be two-sided. We have to speak about what has been done wrong to us. Because if we're going to talk about what such and such rapper said, what Nick Cannon said, or what um, Kanye said, or what the minister said, or what Kyrie didn't even say, a, a movie he promoted or, or just tweeted out. Because it's all words. You can't point to us um, harming and aggrieving anybody who is white and Jewish systematically. We, we have never done that. Let's be clear. Black people in America, we have never systematically harmed or deprived any Jewish people at all. Never. We've never harmed, deprived, aggrieved them systematically. We've never mass incarcerated them. We've never deprived them of any kind of resources or well-being systematically. We have not. The worst that happened is some black folks said something that they didn't like. They said some mean words. Whereas on the other hand, there are people within the anti-black section of Jewish society, white Jewish society, who has discriminated against black people, enslaved black people, incarcerated black people, systematically deprived black people. You, you see? So we gotta have both sides of the conversation, okay? We gotta talk real. If we're gonna have that conversation, we're not going to sit back and just let you Kanye, we get, but don't let Kanye sit up here and think, okay, we got, we, we're sharp, we got blood in the water, so let's just get as many of them as we can. Now, we're not, yeah, we've already said what Kanye did was foul, but what you're not going to do is use that to practice anti black racism. Because I've already had a problem with people like Sarah Blackface Silverman, Howard Blackface Stern jumping out here with their chest poked out finger wagging at Kanye. And you got all of these people within white supremacist suspect society who happen to be Jewish, who practice all of this damn anti-black racism and then they wanna wag the finger. No, 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 no. The conversation has to go both sides. Just sitting us down and smacking us around, that's not a conversation. That's more um, devastation and degradation. All right. We got a lot of, we're going to show the trailer in a second, guys. We got a lot of people in here. How many people? We got 8,000 people in here. We're in here heavy. But family, there's a thing where black folks are not even supposed to acknowledge any type of Jewish, Jewish heritage because they've basically got this thing where they've outed, but black people have been ousted from claiming Hebrew ancestry which is a form of anti-black racism, the same way black people have been ousted from Indian tribes, the same thing that many black people have been ousted from claiming to be Hispanic. You go down there to South America, the black people, they're, they're Hispanic, but the people there don't look at them as Hispanic. And I showed y'all, uh, remember that, that article I showed where they had this contest um, on the East Coast, the Little Miss Hispanic contest, and it was a black girl who was Dominican and they had, she won, but then they had to take her little trophy. They were like, uh, okay, listen, when we mean Hispanic, we mean Hispanic, Hispanic. You Hispanic, but you ain't, you're Morena. You're not Hispanic. So the, they, they had to take that little girl's trophy because she was too black. 
when they mean Hispanic, they don't mean the black people. They mean the 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 light almost passing for white Hispanics. Hispanic means damn near European to a certain degree. You see? So they've ousted black people from really being Hispanic. And they'll claim that those black Hispanics when it's political politically expedient to do so. You dig? But this whole thing where black people are no longer allowed to say, hey, man, I, you know, my family, I come from a, a Hebrew background. I come from, you know, I identify with, with Judaism. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. You're not the real deal. So when you look at the word, because I've been talking to people online, I'm like, so what's, what's about this movie, Hebrews to Negroes, what's so anti-Semitic about it? And they were like, well, one part of it is anti-Semitic because they keep inferring that, well, black people are the real Jews. And if you say that one group is the real group of a certain entity and you dismiss the other group, well, that is anti-Semitic. Well, damn it, ain't that what white Jewish people from the anti-black sector of white society, isn't that what they do to black people who claim any Hebrew identity? They're the first ones to tell them that they're not the real Hebrews. Well, you ain't, you're not really Jewish. Yeah, the minute a black person says, hey, man, I got some you know Hebrew ancestry, some Jewish ancestry, they start digging in their paperwork heavy. They did that with Whoopi Goldberg. They did all types of DNA stuff on Whoopi Goldberg to try to say, hey, wait, well, she ain't really, she ain't really no Goldberg. You know, that's, a, that's a stage name. Because Whoopi, I think she claimed that one of her relatives might have been Jewish back down the line somewhere. And, well, they did all types of tests. They were like, oh, no, no, Whoopi, no, use a Negro. Use a Negro. Yeah. And then I was asking people, I'm like, okay, this movie, what about this movie? What, what, what's anti-Semitic in this movie? And then they said something to the effect of, well, the movie said that there are high-ranking Jews who practice Satanism. So that's one of the things they said. They said this movie or that book said that there were some high-ranking Jews who practice Satanism. Well, let me see something. Let me, let me find the quote. Where is that? Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. I'm trying to find that Satanism part. I'm trying to find that Satanism part. Yeah, they, they were talking about that. Da, 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 da. Hold on. Let me find that Satan thing. Uh, da, 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 admitted to Satan worship. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right. Okay, there we go. Okay. Kyrie Irving says anti Semitic label not justified after promoting book and film that claim powerful Jews worship Satan. Okay, got it. So they were saying that's anti Semitic. But, okay, is that anti Semitic? Because, okay, the Church of Satanism. The Church of Satanism was founded by Anton Levy. Anton Levy, he's Jewish. Now, he doesn't represent all Jewish people. But the church, the, the church of Satanism, and the Church of Satanism is still around right now. The Church of Satanism was founded by Anton Levy. You guys can look this up. This is just history. I'm, this is not my opinion. I'm just talking about history. Anton Levy is Jewish, or was Jewish. I think he di he died. I don't know when he died, but he's. Now, does that represent all Jewish people? No, of course not. And does even his Jewishness does that have anything to do with him worshiping Satan, or creating? He created the Church of Satanism. Yeah, look that up. Google it. That's not that's not a lie. Again, if I if I'm telling a lie or any untruth, you please stop me. Please stop me. Anton Levy was Jewish. Does he represent all Jewish people? No. Most Jewish people, they don't worship no Satan. But were there people like Anton Levy who started the Church of Satanism? Damn. So when people are talking about history, let, let, let's, let's, let's put it in the right context. Let's put it in the, in the right context, family. Let's put it in the right context. Yeah. 
We got a lot of folks in here. Are y'all ready? Yeah, he started it in San Francisco, 1966. The Church of Satanism still goes on right now. And he was a white supremacist. The, the, the Church of Satanism, they were using um, certain white supremacist narratives. Damn, there's some Nazi type stuff, which was very interesting. You think? A lot of their ideology came from, um, what's that What's that book? White is Might. It was a book called White is Might. I think that was the name of it that was written in the 1800s. And a lot of their ideology was coming from that, from a lot of these white supremacist tropes, you see, which were anti-black. Let me find that. White is Might. Where's that White is Might book? Where's that White is Might? I can't find it right now, but there was a book that the Church of Satan kind of plagiarized to a certain degree, and they plagiarized from a white supremacist. Yeah? So yeah, we, we're not going to let them beat up on brothers and sisters for telling the truth. See, when we start telling the truth, we got to be codified with it and just start, not start just saying real reckless stuff. Just put the truth out there. You can't argue with the truth. Everything that I've said tonight has not been my opinion on anything. I always look at things from the viewpoint of a historian, all right? I look at things and I'm explaining things from the viewpoint of a historian, all right? You did? I always look at it from the viewpoint of a historian. I look at it from a historic aspect. What happened, what didn't happen? Not my opinion, not going DEFCON 3 and all of that stuff. No, 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 no. History is history. All right? Look, let, I think there's a lot of people in here, damn near 9,000 people in here. Are you guys ready? Speaking of history, are you guys ready to see the trailer for my new film entitled American Maroon? Now, ladies and gentlemen, you guys are going to be the first people on the planet to see the official trailer. We had a teaser trailer we put out some months ago. We're going to get back into the conversation, but we're going to, let's show the trailer now. Um, let's do this. Before I show the trailer, I'm going to need everybody to, you see the share button? Let's do this, because if y'all share it, we'll get up to 10,000 people, then I show the trailer. So what I'm going to do, I need everybody, you see the share button, hit the share button, share this on your Twitter right now. Hit the share button and then hit the Twitter link and let it go to your Twitter right now. Everybody share it right now so we can get up to 10,000 people. Right now, everybody share this. Then share it again to your Facebook. Share it to Twitter and then share it to Facebook, ladies and gentlemen. All right? I'm looking at the numbers go up. Are y'all sharing it? Are you guys sharing it? Let's get busy with it. Seeing the, uh, the numbers going up, I'm waiting on y'all to share this thing. All right. All right. So let me, let me, while people are coming in, let me go ahead and play it while the numbers are going to be going up. So right now, family, right now, world premiere. This is the trailer for my new film, American Maroon. There are a lot of misconceptions about maroons. Typically in literature, whites will say that the maroons were uncivilized, they were unorganized, uh, they were lewd, they were barbaric. These were the people who lived in the bush. There is no other group on the planet Earth that have taken on the devil the way we have. In his own house. Some estimates say that there are about 50,000 maroons that you can find per year throughout the Americas. The Great Dismal Swamp was an area between that Virginia, North Carolina, the eastern border area. This was a popular area for a lot of not only runaways, but natives. A lot of the black natives hung out there. The Gullah Geechee were known in that area. Because that's who we are. You can put us anywhere in the world. We are survivors. If you are really tapped in with your environment, you become one with that ecosystem. Right. You know what I'm saying? That ecosystem begins to work with you. We were robbed of our definition of who we were, which is our nationality and our tribe. And we fell into the description of what we were from someone else's eyes. Resistance is not just about not only violence and physically fighting back, but there has to be resistance literature, resistance language. A whole two detachments of U.S. soldiers got mowed down by the black Seminoles. 
They destroyed an entire U.S. military force out of 110 people. They killed 108. That's damn good shooting. The Black Seminoles were using all types of guerrilla warfare tactics, and these warfare tactics are studied in military schools to this day. They didn't like Muslim slaves. The same reason they didn't like Indian slaves, because they weren't afraid to die. Once you realize you're not safe, your children and your families aren't safe, the people who you're bringing in the world are not going to be safe long after you, there becomes a need to stand up and survive at all costs. We are the Maroons. We are today's Maroons. We are the force that's moving forward. We will never be stopped. see that boy did y'all ain't that hot <laughs> oh y'all saw um uh, uh, dr mayotte's baltimore accent yes but dr mayotte represented boy do y'all see we got some heavyweights yes that's aki did y'all see the beautiful aki in there aki was representing heavy man we got some heavyweights in this thing family so y'all see who we got in there? Y'all know this thing is a monster. Man, do y'all see who we got in this movie? <laughs> oh, man, we got the heavyweights. Man. One of my favorite, I love Vicky in it. Vicky looks so good in it. I like the scenery. We went out there to film out there in um, um, Colorado. I, I love her scenes. It looks beautiful. Just the the... The aesthetics of it. Shout out to Red Pill, Blue Pill. Those brothers were dropping fire. Those brothers are heavyweight game spitters, man. Y'all don't understand. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's a it's a long movie. This movie's damn near almost three hours. It's just you know y'all gonna just be hit with so much information, guys. Man. Um, probably January or February, probably January, February. we might get it popping for Black History Month. It would be, that would be flop. So probably February. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. They, my, my actors were getting it in. Oh yeah. The fight scenes are A1. Yeah, I'm in there. Yeah, I was in there. Did y'all see the trailer? I'm in the trailer. Yeah, the you know, the trailer's real fast. But um, Aki did a great job in it. This was Aki's first time doing some stuff on film. I made Aki. I said, Aki, you need to get on in this because you got the look. You got the vibe. You're a very smart girl. So, girl, get your ass in front of the camera. I said, Aki, you study. Get it together because people need to see you. They need to see a fly sister spitting that hot shit. You understand? They need to see a cute fly sister spitting that hot stuff. I thought it was very important. It's important for you to see fly sisters. Dress fly, looking fly, talking fly. I think it's important for our girls to see that. You see? Because our girls are just inundated with, with twerk, twerk, ratchet, ratchet, twerk, twerk, ratchet, ratchet. God damn, there has to be some balance. That's why. Oh, yeah, there's some other sisters in there too, by the way. So, we've got to have some balance. Yeah, of Clyde Winters. Oh, wait. what y'all know about Clyde Winters? What y'all know about Dr. Clyde Winters? Master teacher. I, I, a lot of his books break this game down. I'm a family. Yeah, Vicki Dillard brought, so many people brought different elements to the game. Vicki brought almost the spiritual um, element to it. Um, the brothers Red Pill and Blue Pill, they were breaking down some of the laws and the edicts from Europe that brought over the Moors and how that related to the Maroons here. So, so many people were bringing in so many, and we go deep. Just like, you know, when we did buck breaking, people didn't know that we were gonna go that deep. Yeah, this, this is another one. We're going so deep. We're gonna break this Maroon thing down. We're gonna talk about, and, and a lot of what we're talking about now, um, 
how black people from different religious backgrounds were coming over here corresponding to the aboriginals here. You yeah. think? We, we talk about that. You yeah. think? Phil Moreland, yep. Phil and Paul. Randy Short is always spitting hot fire. He's spitting so much hot fire in this. Dr. Kaba, you know Dr. Kaba. You know how he's going to get down. Yeah. I'm going to show it again in a minute. I'll show it. Oh, yeah, the, the, the brother Chase, the young brother. How old is Chase? Brother Chase McGee. He's a young brother who's an author. How old is Chase? And that brother is so on top of it. Young brother spitting so much hot fire. He's spitting hot fire in this film. This brother... Um, research game is so on point. He's a young brother too. That's another thing too. We like to show not just some of the elder scholars. I'm going to show it again. I'm going to show it again because you got to soak it in. I know a lot of that stuff is fast. I'm going sh to show it again. Um, we show the elder scholars and the, the heavyweight elders. You know, James Small is going to bring that, that heat. Brother Cobb is going to bring it. Brother Phil Valentine is going to bring it. Um, and it, it's showing the new class of cats too. Yeah, yeah. Chase is like twenty. He's like twenty-seven, right? Young dude, man. He's written a couple of books. Chief Janice, is that the Gullah sister from um, 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 South Carolina? Because there were other people that I was trying to reach out to, and I just couldn't get a hold of them. There was another brother who was, um, I think, he was part of the Washita. Oh, no, he, the Yamasee was a brother, and I just couldn't get with him. There were a few people that I wanted to get with, and just the scheduling was kind of, you know. But we got damn near 18 people in the movie, so shit. I had to cut it off at one point. There were some people mad. You know, there's one person that I was going to have, and he got mad. God damn, I've been knowing you for 30 years, Tariq. Damn, brother, I, shit. It's a movie, man. Shit happens, bro. Yeah. Yes, but yeah, Aki looks wonderful in the movie. Aki looks so phenomenal. Yeah, Neil Vaz. What you know about Neil Vaz? That's another brother. He He's down there in Florida. He he teaches stuff about the Seminoles. I'm telling you, we got some goddamn heavyweights. Boy, we don't, we ain't playing around with this thing, man. This is the, and what's so interesting, it's such a deep history that's never talked about. It's such a deep history that is never talked about. Nobody ever talks about the black people who were here living in these swamps all around North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, putting in work. It has never talked about. They act like they didn't even exist. This, we're opening up those can of worms. Also, in the film, we, we go deep talking about, like I said, the different groups that were coming over here corresponding with the black aboriginal and the red aboriginal. And we talk a lot about the proof of the black aboriginal people here. I mean, just proof, no opinions. We're proving, we're giving you the proof of the black aboriginals who were here. We talk about how people like Columbus and other European explorers, they would bring over translators here. They've been bringing translators. They brought translators here, and the translators would speak um, all these different indigenous languages. They would also speak Arabic and Hebrew, going back to the Hebrew thing. Columbus, in fact, he brought a, a Hebrew translator. They Christianized his name. His name was um, something, Ben something, but they, they, they remember when they had the Inquisition, and expel the Moors and the Jews, the ones they didn't expel, they made them convert to Christianity. So when you see a lot of black people coming, or you see a lot of people coming here, or you read a lot of dockets of people coming here with European explorers, they'll have a Spanish name or a Christian name, but they were actually a black person or a Jewish person. And um, one of the people Columbus bought, along with the black people, he brought the Nino brothers, Pedro Alonso, Alonso Nino, these were black people. These were the people who owned the ships that he brought, as, as a matter of fact. They were black. We prove all that stuff. He also brought a Hebrew translator, Luis Torres. Luis Torres, 
that's the first documented Jewish person to come to the Americas. And he was a translator. And when Torres and others were corresponding with the indigenous people, the indigenous people understood what the hell they were saying. You understood? You understand what I'm saying? A lot of them were coming over here. They were bringing translators who spoke Hebrew and the people here understood the shit. So that means there must have been some people who were practicing Hebrew coming back and forth here. You understand? Havi, Havri Ben Levi, Levi, yeah, that's his name, yeah. Louis Torres. Yeah, that was the, the first documented Jewish person coming over here, and he was a translator. And what's interesting, they put him in jail for seven years because he came over here and he um, learned how to smoke cigarettes and to cigars. Um, they were over here in Hispaniola, and they introduced them to tobacco. They're like, hey, you smoke this, man. This shit will get you right. So he took that over to Europe, and he was up there smoking cigars and stuff, and they were like, what kind of evil shit is that? Get your ass in jail. So they put him in jail for like seven years. When he got out, everybody in Spain was smoking. Yeah. Yeah, many of these Native American tribes when you look at some of the languages they, they, they were using, some of it was Hebrew. Some of it was Arabic. Okay? So that means, because when they say that the first European they come over was Columbus, he was the first European, so if there were people speaking Arabic and they were not European, there were people speaking Hebrew and they were not European, who were they? Most likely these were black people speaking a Hebrew language, and they were definitely Arabic speaking a Hebrew language because we know the Moors who were Arabic, they spoke Arabic. Well, they were they were practicing Islam and they were speaking and writing Arabic. And these are, this is history. Nobody's denigrating anybody. I'm just talking about logic. This is not to dismiss or anything. We're just talking about logic, okay? We're just talking about logic. This is just logic we're talking. Logic and history. We just kind of put two and two together. If there were indigenous people here who knew some Hebrew languages, who the hell brought it over here to them? Somebody had to bring this over there, this, these languages to them. If there were indigenous people here who knew Arabic, Somebody had to bring that over here for them to understand it. And why are all of the damn, most of the translators they were bringing were black? We proved this in the new movie. This is this movie is important, man. We clearing up a lot of stuff in this movie. We're clearing up a lot of stuff in this movie, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah? So, there's a way to have a discussion that's a two-sided discussion where it's not just you browbeating a black person, smacking them around and putting them in their place. You see, that's not a discussion. That's another form of white supremacy. Because if we're going to talk about a black person saying something anti-Semitic, okay, that black person don't need to say that. But don't use I'm white and I say so. If a black person says, hey, man, I got some Hebrew ancestry, and then you want to browbeat him by calling that person anti-Semitic. Well, no, that's anti-black racism. And we are not going to bow down to that. We're not going to bow down to that at all. You see? Because we're not going to negate the fact that there have been people within white supremacist society who just happen to be Jewish and they practice anti-black racism. And I've pointed this out. Um... You had people like um, the guy who was part of the um, Dan Burroughs, who was a Jewish man who was uh, one of the leaders of the American Nazi Party in the 1960s. Dan Burroughs helped orchestrate that bombing down there in Alabama, in Birmingham, that killed those girls. The 16th Street Baptist Church bombing. He was one of the people part of the organization that helped orchestrate that sick nonsense. He's a Jewish dude. And remember, Dr. King, not only was he calling out the white supremacist Christians, he was calling out the white supremacist anti-black rabbis too. You see? 
You, know, you, you don't don't have your people practice anti-black racism and then go try to say, hey, you can't say nothing about me because that's anti-Semitic if you point out my racism. No, 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 it's not. If you a person who practice anti-black racism, it has to be called out. Black people have never harmed none of these groups. These groups have harmed us. Remember, it was people like Al Jolson getting on TV, who was Jewish, one of the first major, major movie stars, running around here putting on blackface, yelling mammy. That justified lynching a lot of black people. We, we, are we going to have, let's have this conversation. It's going to be both sided. Let's have that conversation, all right? We're not just going to beat up on Kanye. All right, we know Kanye did some foul stuff and said some foul stuff, but hey, if we're going to have a conversation, there's some other things that we need to point out too. All right? And I pointed some of this stuff out before. Black people have never systematically harmed none of these groups. Let's go back to Alabama, down there in the segregated South, the, the stores that were practicing these Jim Crow laws and not letting black folks eat at the counters, many of those stores were Jewish-owned. The Klan in many of those stores down south, they were getting those Klan robes from Jewish merchants down there. There's an anti-black sector within white Jewish society. We got Ben Shapiro, anti-black as hell. This is a major anti-black racist who's Jewish and nobody Jewish ever calls him out. This man mocked a, a, a black child getting murdered. He mocked Trayvon Martin, among, among other things he's done. He's done. You yeah. Yeah, the anti-black sector within white Jewish society has to be called out. You, you dig? It's not our duty to, to let them practice anti-black racism against us. Yeah? Huh? Let's keep it a buck. We're talking history here. We're just talking straight history, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah? All I'm talking is history. Yeah, because see, this thing now, because with Kanye, again, they, they smell blood in the water now. They smell blood, so now let's just try to use some I'm white and I say so and get a couple of other ones. Let's get a couple of other Negroes. No, no we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. And even with Kanye, you know, what y'all not going to do is also, y'all not going to make him the poster boy of anti-Semitism. All right, that's another thing too, because now the thing with Kanye, the, you're really going overboard with Kanye. You, you take, took a couple of billion dollars from the guy. Now they're talking about taking the man's kids. They're talking about he might lose custody of his kids. So now it's really some overkill stuff. It's really going overboard. It's really going overboard now, you dig? So now that, it's gonna have to be a halt to that too. You dig? Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna just do that now. Now some of this stuff is getting into some anti-black racism here. All right. So, because here's the thing: when when those in the dominant society, when they do some anti-black, boy, they got every excuse in the world for them. Did y'all see this story about this reporter, um, Casey Funderburg? All right, there's this reporter down in, um, what city is she in? I forgot what city she's in. Casey Funderburg. And they dug up some old tweets about her. She had some tweets where she was using the N-word. And boy, they've been sitting here, and she got fired. Her ass got fired from those tweets. And boy, white society has been splaining left and right. Oh my God, well... Why would she get fired? Those tweets were eight years old. That's ancient history. Here, these white supremacists splaining based on tweets she sent back in high school. We have to stop this absurd practice of canceling people for things they did on social media as teenagers. Oh, they're splaining. Oh, they're splaining. The, the lovely Casey was fired over tweets from middle school. Oh, oh, she was just a baby. Oh, they're explaining their asses off. Getting fired for 10-year-old tweets. Stop. P 
People going after Casey for tweets eight years ago need to go sit on a pole. Go F yourself while you're trying to eat your own for no damn reason. All right, no, she can get that work too. Oh, they were, oh, eight years ain't that damn long ago. Getting Casey fired for some ancient tweets. They're so The white supremacists are so damn extra. So eight years is ancient now. Oh, that was just a million years ago. Oh, no, leave her alone. Oh, here we go. Here's the real deal. Well, black people use it. How come white people can't use it? That's what it, they, they, they love that trope. If black people can use it, how come white people can't use it? We've lost our minds, Tennessee reporter Casey getting fired for racist tweets. How dare you punish a white person for anti-black racism? for tweets made in her teens. We all said stuff at that age we regret. And now we're more educated and evolved. Shut the hell up. When it's, when it's up to other people practicing anti-black racism, oh, that was so long ago. Oh, she didn't know no better. Oh, she was a baby. Oh, she was on some medication. Shut up. Kanye was on medication too, right? We all know that Kanye has some, some mental stuff going on. Has some mental illness stuff going on. Nobody is giving him the mental illness pass. Huh? Nobody is using the mental illness pass with Kanye West, right? Oh, yeah. with Con Remember Kevin Hart? They dug up a tweet from, what, 2010? But he, he made a, a gay joke. And they dug up a tweet from damn 2010 with Kevin Hart and then gave him the walk of shame all through the damn media. No, go to hell. Miss me, they, they got Bill Cosby, they're demonizing Bill Cosby from shit from the 1960s, from false allegations from the 60s. And they're still trying to demonize Bill Cosby for false allegations from the 1960s. Yeah? Real interesting, guys. Yeah, Tracy Morgan did the same thing to him, too. But um, but anyway, man, listen. We got to stay on our square. If we're, going, if we're going to have a conversation about black relationships and Jewish relationships, it's going to have to be one-sided. Just getting a black person and smacking them around and dangling their career over their head saying, we're going to deprive you of your resources if you don't let us smack you around. That's not a dialogue. That's anti-black racism and domination. That's another, that's just a form of white supremacy. White supremacy is never good. We're not going to go for white supremacy because you within Jewish society, you don't want to go for white supremacy. You saw how that turned out. The Nazi party was a party of white supremacy. Even though the Jewish people there are classified as white, they weren't white enough, according to the Nazis. You see? Remember, when Hitler's ass, who's a psycho, he was very adamant about saying, hey, what we're doing to the people here ain't got nothing to do with religion. This is about race. It wasn't about religion with him. It wasn't a religious difference. It was all racial. And you know why it was racial? Because the, the, the narrative was with the Nazis that, well, Jewish people, they have that Negro bloodline. That was the problem. To them, the Jewish people here have Negro blood. He, that's what Hitler was all about. We, we got to get that strain out of here. Goes back to Africa. That's why when you look at the racist websites, they always show Jewish people, the stereotypical Jewish caricatures with afro hair, with black hair, like a black person. You see? The white supremacists understand the Africanness, the African bloodline of Hebrews. I'm just talking history here. They understand the Africanness of it. That's their problem with it. That's why they had a problem with it, family. It wasn't anything about no ideological differences. No, it was because he, the, the Nazis felt and they said that the Hebrews, 
they got that African blood strain in them. And we want to have a pure white society here in Germany. We want to have a pure Aryan society, which is no such thing. You understand? So we got to understand history, family. We have to understand history. I'm just talking from a historic perspective. This is how we discuss history. Nobody's being offended. I'm not offending anybody. I'm not saying anything that I'm making up. I'm not even giving my opinion. I'm just talking history. I'm talking from a neutral position of history. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they brought Hebrew translators. Yeah, yeah. Google all, everything I'm saying, Google it. Look it up. Look it up. Yeah. There, were, there, there had to be Hebrews coming over here. Hebrews and Arabs. We knew that, not Arabs, but, but Islamic Moors. We knew that. It, w watch this movie. We talk about, because we talk a lot about the Moors in the new movie, American Maroon. We, we talk about, we give you the names of some of the, the Moors who were coming over here trading with the indigenous people here. This is how Columbus and those guys knew where to go. You understand? Yeah, this is I'm, this is neutral. This is not my opinion. I have not given my opinion one time tonight. I have not given my opinion. Everything is neutral history. I'm just telling history so that we can have a real conversation and a real dialogue without people practicing anti-black racism and trying to browbeat us like they're trying to do our brother Kyrie. You're not going to do Kyrie like that. We, we stand by that brother. We stand by that brother. That brother sharing a link to a movie, you, you can't pin a bigotry charge on that brother. Can't do that. Yeah? Because that's just some white and I say so. Because if you're going to do that, you got to go to Amazon and start hollering at them about all of the, the movies that they got that you disagree with and get them to take it off. Have the issue with them, with the platform. Not a black person sharing it. You try to go for a soft, easy target who you think is going to be an easy target. Oh, that's just anti-black racism. We can't go for that. Yeah. They said he deleted the tweet. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay if he did, if he deleted the tweet. All right. Uh, we got I am. I see you in here. You're scared of me because you're you're hiding behind your your your, your screen on a troll account and you're projecting. Oh yeah. By the way, in 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 Washington D.C. next week, it's going to be 74 degrees. The ancestors are clearing the air for us because it's going to be a kind of chilly this week up until Saturday in Washington, D.C. Up until Saturday, it's going to be nice and warm. It's going to be a beautiful day. We need everybody to come on up there to Washington, D.C. to rock with us, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a phenomenal moment in history, ladies and gentlemen. Us getting together, talking about tangibles, Washington, D.C., Saturday, November 5th, 2022, Freedom Plaza. We need everybody up there. Go to rallyforreparations.com. And family, if you can hit the Rallies for Reparations link below, hit that, make a donation. Any donation is great. That helps us offset the cost of putting this monumental uh, project together because it's 100% grassroots. We are not affiliated with any political party. Because I've been seeing some media reports of some, the Democratic shields are upset that we're having this because we're demanding something and we ain't supposed to demand nothing. And the Democrats are already suffering, so they're trying to frame this, well, the Republicans must be funding this. Y'all know we ain't about to give y'all nothing. How are you going to go embarrass us like that? They think that we're going, family, listen, they think that we're going to D.C. to embarrass the Democrats. They think that we are going to D.C. to embarrass Democrats. They're, they're acting like they're going to be embarrassed because we're demanding some tangibles. If you want us to vote, you got to give us something specifically. See, we got to stop this scared nonsense. We've been too scared to just step to them like that and say, hey, man, we're all coming together. We're here. We're showing you how serious we are with our numbers. Look at our numbers. We're coming in numbers showing you how serious we are, and we want something specifically for foundational black Americans that's tangible. You see, we've not done that in large numbers. That's why it's so important to do this, ladies and gentlemen. It is so important to do this, family. So we need everybody in the place to be next Saturday, 
start making your plans. It's going to be phenomenal up there in Washington, D.C. Let me show you. Let me show you all my baby girls. People keep talking about my baby girl's Halloween costume, how cute it was. Let me show y'all here. Everybody's just gawking on how cute Amira was. My, this is my, my little princess, a little Amira love. Let me show y'all my baby girl's little cute Halloween costume. I would show my boys, but they had masks on. They had like little Spider-Man outfits on and stuff. What's this text to me? Shout out to the Cash App people. People hitting the Cash App. This is my little baby girl, my little princess. Look at that. Look at that cute kid. Look at that. <laughs> Her mama got her that little skeleton. Look, ain't that cute as hell? Her little skeleton outfit. Oh, she's a sweetheart. Look at that little angelic baby. Looking just like my ass. My lady mad as hell. Cause she want the boys kind of look more like my lady. A lot of my boy my boys look like my lady. And the girl came out looking like my ass. <laughs> She's like, God damn. How's she gonna look like you, nigga? I wanted, I wanted a little mini me. She wanted a mini me for herself. No, you got a mini Mac. You got a mini me, Tariq. And a little Amira. But um, let's do this, family. Let me show the trailer for the movie one more time. Y'all want an encore, family? Do you want an encore? Do you want an encore of the trailer? All right? Do y'all want an encore of the trailer? All right? Here we go. Let's do an encore of the trailer and then you can go back and watch it again on my um my, my twitter i'm not my twitter on my um on my um youtube it's gonna be posted on my youtube so let me let me post the let me show the trailer one more time guys here we go here we go There are a lot of misconceptions about maroons. Typically in literature, whites will say that the maroons were uncivilized, they were unorganized, uh, they were lewd, they were barbaric. These were the people who lived in the bush. There is no other group on the planet Earth that have taken on the devil the way we have. In his own house. Some estimates say that there are about 50,000 maroons that you can find per year throughout the Americas. The Great Dismal Swamp was an area between that Virginia, North Carolina, the eastern border area. This was a popular area for a lot of not only runaways, but natives. Uh, a lot of the black natives hung out there. The Gullah Geechee were known in that area. Because that's who we are. You can put us anywhere in the world. We are survivors. If you are really tapped in with your environment, you become one with that ecosystem. Right. You know what I'm saying? That ecosystem begins to work with you. We were robbed of our definition of who we were, which is our nationality and our tribe. And we fell into the description of what we were from someone else's eyes. Resistance is not just about not only violence and physically fighting back, but there has to be resistance literature, resistance language. A whole two detachments of U.S. soldiers got mowed down by the black Seminoles. They destroyed an entire U.S. military force out of 110 people. They killed 108. That's damn good shooting. The Black Seminoles were using all types of guerrilla warfare tactics, and these warfare tactics are studied in military schools to this day. They didn't like Muslim slaves. The same reason they didn't like Indian slaves, because they weren't afraid to die. Once you realize you're not safe, your children and your families aren't safe, the people who you're bringing in the world are not going to be safe long after you, there becomes a need to stand up and survive at all costs. We are the Maroons. We are today's Maroons. We are the force that's moving forward. We will never be stopped. Phenomenal, 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 man. Great film. I can't wait for y'all to see it. I cannot wait for y'all to see this, ladies and gentlemen. I can't wait for y'all to see it. Phenomenal film, man. Did y'all notice um, 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 
Bree and Layla in the movie? Did y'all notice Bree and Layla in there? Bree and Layla is in the movie. Did y'all see Bree and Layla in there? Bree and Layla is in the movie. And there was a, they were in that little clip, by the way. The museum is out here, man. We still getting stuff together for the museum. Yeah, we still getting stuff together. We got the museum. We got the, the building already. So we just we're gonna do some some mural. Well, a mural. We're gonna do a mural starting next month. And we're just getting all the curating and all of that stuff together. We're getting busts made, and we're just getting all the curating together, gathering all of the stuff. When I'm when I'm done with this the the rally. I'm going to get a team so we can just really start curating stuff and just getting artifacts from all over the country to put in there. So, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Layla and Bree in there. Yeah, they came and did a little cameo. Yeah. Yeah, they're in there. Yeah, they're in, the, they're in the trailer. They're in the trailer. If you take a good look, you'll see them. Go back and look at the trailer again. Yes, they're maroons. <laughs> Yes, they came out and, you know, they, they did a good job. Man. All right, man, let me get up out of here, man. Look, go to rallyforreparations.com, ladies and gentlemen, rallyforreparations.com. Um, everybody get ready to come on out to Washington, D.C. this Saturday. Um, ladies and gentlemen, go to my YouTube channel, um, share this link, and share the, the trailer link. Put the trailer link all in your profile. Okay, the link to the trailer is here on my page. And subscribe to my page if you have not subscribed. All right? So I'm up out of here, man. Y'all be good. Papi Akute and Lilla Vube to the family. 